subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 5th of January. Indian health experts urge preparations for new wave of COVID-19. Opposition heads out at Pakistan PM Imran Khan after ECP report on funding. And Taliban's Mullah Brother calls ex-officials corrupt, says no place for them in Afghan cabinet. And now for all the details. India reported 58,000 plus COVID cases, a doubling of the daily tally over the past four days. The country also reported its first COVID-19 death on Wednesday, linked to the fast-spreading Omicron variant in the western state of Rajasthan, a health ministry official said. Indian health experts have warned to prepare for the third wave as they said hospitals could be soon swamped with patients and healthcare system could be terribly overwhelmed. New COVID-19 cases in India surged to 58,097 on Wednesday, a doubling of the daily tally over the past four days as health experts call for preparations to ensure hospitals are not overwhelmed by a new wave of patients. A 72-year-old man died of COVID-19 complications in northern West Udaipur city, becoming India's first death related to the new coronavirus. Infections have been increasing sharply in cities, with the fast-spreading Omicron variant of the virus becoming dominant in places like New Delhi, authorities said. India has confirmed nearly 2,000 cases of the variant, with many more expected, lending urgency to calls for hospitals to get ready. We expect our country, which is population of more than four times, to be around somewhere around 20-25 lakh cases per day. We should be prepared for that one. Authorities, especially in the Indian capital New Delhi, have repeatedly said only those who actually need the round-the-clock monitoring should go to the hospital, while others should recover at home. Delhi tightened up virus mitigation measures on Tuesday, ordering people to stay home on the weekends in addition to the night curfew. देश में तीसरी लहर और दिल्ली के अंदर पांचवी लहर बिल्कुल आ चुकी है। केसेस कल साढ़े पांच हजार के आसपास थे, और आज दस हजार के आसपास जो शाम तक बुलेटिन अभी कंपाइल किया जा रहा है डाटा तो केसेस काफी तेजी से बढ़ रहे हैं बस ये संतोष की बात ये है कि सिम्टम्स जो हैं वो काफी माइल हैं पहले के मुकाबले में Health ministry officials have said covid safety measures such as mask wearing and social distancing apply to all including politicians though few seem to heed the advice India has had more than 35 million cases the second highest tally after the United States the health ministry reported 534 new deaths on Wednesday, taking that toll to 482,551. Indian security forces gunned down three terrorists on Wednesday in an encounter in restive Jammu and Kashmir territory. Police said all three belonged to the dreaded Jesh Muhammad terror outfit and two of them were from Pakistan. An AK-47 and two M4 rifles were recovered from their possession. Security forces neutralized three terrorists, including two Pakistan nationals in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday. The terrorists belong to Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed or JEM terror outfit and one of them was a local from Kashmir. The police said it has also recovered three rifles and ammunition from the slain terrorists. We had operation launched in which we had an operation in the morning, in which we had three डेड टेरिस्ट मारे गए जिसमें दो पाकिस्तानी टेरिस्ट हैं एक लोकल टेरिस्ट है और उसके पास एक एक फोर्टी सेवन और दो एम फोर एफल मिला है इन नेबरिंग कुलगाम डिस्ट्रिक्ट टू मोर टेररिस्ट बिलोंगिंग टू द रेजिडेंस फ्रंट और फ्रंट ऑफ द पाकिस्तान बेस्ड लश्कर ए ताइबा आउटफिट 
were gunned down in a separate gunfight. Muslim majority Kashmir has been a site of decades of hostility between nuclear arc rivals India and Pakistan. Both countries claim it in full but rule it in part. India accuses the Pakistan army of training and infiltrating terrorists into Kashmir to stir trouble in the valley. Pakistan denies the charge. The opposition have slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan and his ruling Pakistan Tehreek and Saf Party after a scrutiny committee of the Election Commission of Pakistan reported that the party did not disclose millions of rupees worth of funds to the constitutional body. The opposition has berated Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and his ruling Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf party after a scrutiny committee of the Election Commission of Pakistan reported that the party did not disclose millions of rupees worth of funds to the constitutional body. The report stated PTI did not disclose funding worth more than rupees 310 million. The State Bank of Pakistan's bank statement also revealed that the party had received rupees 1.64 billion in funding, local media reported. PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz said Imran Khan had not only stolen and hidden money but also plundered the people and no other party in history has been behind such serious fraud and scandals. Opposition PPPs Shazia Mari asked the PTI and PM Khan to give Talashi or give themselves for the examination for hiding foreign funds. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhary in response said that according to the report, there's no question of foreign funding and that it is based on finding when PTI was not in power. Pakistan Tariq and Saab is a wide jamaat of Pakistan which is a very simple, elaborate system created for funding. And what is the system? The system is that the world is spread in the world तरीके इंसाफ के कारकुनान तरीके इंसाफ को फंड करते हैं। The minister demanded scrutiny of the accounts of the PMLN, PPP and all other political parties as well. Pakistan's Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen tabled the Finance Supplementary Bill 2021, also called the Mini Budget, in the Senate on Tuesday amid protests from opposition members. The bill seeks to amend certain laws on taxes and duties to meet the International Monetary Fund's conditions for the clearance of a US$6 billion US dollar funding facility. The withdrawal of tax exemptions would raise 343 billion rupees, Tareen had earlier said. Opposition leader Sherry Rahman said it is tantamount to economic murder of the people. This comes as surging food and energy prices have put PM Imran Khan under increasing pressure in recent months as household bills have caused growing anger among the middle classes which had provided his government's main support base. Taliban's Deputy Prime Minister Mullah Abdul Ghani Parader has said that the Islamic Emirate will not include members of the fallen Republic government in its cabinet, accusing them of being corrupt. He emphasized that the international community needs to recognize the Taliban government soon as the country faces an economic crisis that will also have negative consequences for the entire region and the world. Taliban's Deputy Prime Minister Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, in an interview with Radio Television of Afghanistan this week, said that the Islamic Emirate will not include any of the ex-officials of the previous Republic government in its cabinet. Baradar said that during the Doha talks, the U.S. had given the names of some former government officials, but he accused them of being corrupt and that will harm the integrity of the Taliban-led government, he said. He added that the Islamic Emirate has fulfilled the preconditions for recognition and that the world should recognize the group formally. As Afghanistan is grappling with an economic crisis that will majorly impact the entire region and the world. This comes as much depends on whether Washington is willing to unfreeze billions of dollars in central bank reserves and lift sanctions that have caused many institutions and governments to shy away from direct dealings with Taliban causing a severe economic crisis. The Taliban has faced heavy criticism for keeping women and girls out of employment and education and excluding broad sections of Afghan society from the government. They have also been accused of trampling on human rights and despite their promise of amnesty, 
targeting officials of the former administration. Season's first snowfall in northern Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory brought cheers to tourists who were seen enjoying the snow. For many, the territory is a holiday paradise, especially during the winters, as large numbers of tourists flock to the region to witness snowfall. India's northern Srinagar city received heavy snow on Wednesday as tourists played with snow and enjoyed boat rides in the famous Dal Lake. The entire pristine region was covered under a thick blanket of snow as people carried on with their work and tourists chose to enjoy the winter chill by playing games in snow. It was a very good experience because here is all foggy foggy. The weather is very good. Pleasant weather is very good. And apart from this, there is a snowfall. Which is a new experience. Like this is first time for me. Meanwhile, dense fog blanketed major cities in northern India, disrupting traffic movement. A bus collided with a road divider due to dense fog and subsequent low visibility in Muradabad, causing minor injuries to 15 to 20 passengers. Indra Pandra was also driving. Daily commuters also faced problems in other parts of the country due to fog. Several trains were delayed in eastern Asansol town and people had to turn their headlights on while travelling on the road. The snowfall in the hilly regions had a direct impact as temperature also plummeted in many northern states such as Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Indian capital New Delhi. More than 1,000 people have fled Myanmar, including the family of 51-year-old Mahathyal, to neighbouring Indian state of Mizoram due to civil unrest in the country. Mahathyal had no choice but to take shelter in Mizoram after the Myanmar army seized power and began eliminating militia forces who opposed the military rule. For more than a decade, Mathyal said she ran a small store in Tantalang, a town in northwest Myanmar, making enough money to send her four children to school and see her eldest daughter secure a coveted government job. On September 8, the 51-year-old said her peaceful life in the hilltop settlement ended suddenly when Myanmar's military attacked and burned down houses forcing the family to flee and shelter in neighbouring India's Mizoram state. Along with her husband, children, parents and an aunt, Mahathyal now lives in a shack made of corrugated metal sheets and woods clinging to a mountainside in Mizoram's Farkaun village. September in Farkau, a settlement of around 4,000 people, residents banded together to help around 1,100 Myanmar nationals who crossed over since February. In mid-December, Mizoram's chief minister, Zoram Thanga, met ousted Myanmar's lawmakers and promised them his government would continue to help those seeking shelter in the Indian state. Myanmar was plunged into crisis when the military ousted the civilian government of Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st, triggering protests and conflict in the countryside between anti-Janta militia and the army. Located in Myanmar's Chin state, where an armed rebellion has taken hold, Tantalang has seen repeated attacks by the military, also known as Tatmado, since early September, according to three former residents and a rights camp. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.